Hi there, I'm Robin Marie and welcome to this video tutorial on the Jelly Arts gel printing plate. One of my favorite art supplies, probably next to my sewing machine, is the jelly plate. So in this tutorial, I'm going to walk you through just some basics, like some very basic steps in how I create layers when I'm working with my jelly plate. Now, another thing too, uh, depending on when you're watching this video, um, they've also come out with some new paints. They've got new paints that are formulated for the jelly plate, which is super exciting. And they also have stencils and some kits. And in the very beginning intro of the video tutorial, I'm going to show you some of those products. So you can see uh, some of the things that they have uh, available. So jelly printing, one of the things I love to do is what I call segmenting. And so basically segmenting is a way that you can pull out or not pull out, but block out areas where you have very specific um, colors or pattern. And here's a great example. This one's super, super easy, but here's a quick one. I'm gonna be focusing a lot on tags where you've got these areas where things are segmented. And what I love to do with these is create starter art tags. And then that way, um, I have things to work with, especially the papers too. That way I have something when I'm ready to work on a project, whether it's a journal page or whether it's um, a collage, I can just pull those um, uh, papers out and fold them and cut them and tear them and use them in my projects. And it's a very relaxing process to go through. So I hope that if you don't have a jelly plate, you'll be inspired um, to see what you can do. And if you have a jelly plate, you need to get it out and use it if you haven't yet. So. Um, if you have any questions, let me know. Before we get started on the demonstration I'm going to do with um, the jelly plate, I wanted to show you a few of the products that um, have recently come out at the time of this filming by uh, Jelly Art. So we've got some kits. I'm going to show you those. They have some new um, tools as well. Uh, these are just printing tools and they basically have these uh, these edges on them where you can scrape and I'll show you how to use these. Each one of these has three different patterns. So you've got, um, a, let's see, three, you've got nine different patterns here with just the one pack of the uh, printing tools. And then they have some stencils now uh, that you can get. I've got this one and I've got a couple other ones, but um, just wanted to point out that they do have some stencils that you can use. And then they have these really awesome kits now. So let's take a look at the patch printing kit. And I wanna show you because they also have, um, new paint. Uh, paint that is, uh, let's see here, let's a, here's a couple um, different bottles here. So there's three different colors in this particular one. Now these paints are geared for the jelly plate. So they are, um, they're, they're not super heavy, but they're heavier than fluid. And what's nice about them as well is that they have more of an, o there's an, it's an open formula so that they stay a little bit wet longer which is great when you're working with the jelly plate. And so this particular kit, um, as in the other ones, they have a brayer, they have a, uh, one of the scraping tools, they have some other uh, bits of things that you can use to create with, and they also have the elements that you need and directions. So this is for patch printing, so it's giving you all the things you need. And I especially love the fact that even inside these kits, you get um, these smaller jelly plates that you can use um, as well. So these are pretty much self-contained. Everything you need to um, use to create with uh, comes inside these kits. Um, they've got a good array of colors here. And of course you can mix colors. And I like to mix colors when I'm working on the jelly plate. I don't always stick with one or two colors. I like to kind of mix things up. So I'm gonna be using these different colors. Now, if you're new to the jelly plate, you uh, can uh, use it out uh, on a, a surface, like this is a piece of plexiglass, or you can use it on the plastic that comes on either side of the plate. And uh, you could also use it on a craft mat. You wanna make sure though that you don't use it on a porous surface like paper, mainly because there is natural minerals in the jelly plate, and you wanna make sure that those natural minerals do not seep out. So we wanna keep it on something non-porous. This is a piece of plexiglass that I use. You can see it's really painty and I like it because it's heavy and it stays still a little easier than the plastic that comes with. But either way, you can just pull it right out of the package and leave one of the pieces of plastic on the back and you're good to go. And so the basics of uh, jelly print printing, you're gonna need a brayer, 
you're going to need some acrylic paints. Now, the other thing that you want is an array of papers that you want to print with. Do not limit yourself to just plain old white paper because there are so many papers that you can use. Um, you can use tags. I'm gonna show you in this demonstration how I get uh, my tags to have these nice um, elements to them where they're, um, they have segments. I call it segmenting and I'll show you that. Um, this is just a piece of ledger paper. You can use catalog or book papers, awful nice, because you can have these pieces that are uh, gonna peek through uh, when you use them. I like to use either a hot press watercolor paper or a nice mixed media paper. And of course, my one of my favorites, aside from newsprint, is this um, True Ray construction paper. And I've already kind of inked this up with some watercolor. These are just some scraps, and so I'm gonna use these. And it just, Every paper takes the paint differently. And so I recommend that you experiment and just, you'll find what you like. Now, the process is a process, basically. You, you need to be building up your layers um, as you work. So it's not just, okay, a you know, throw on some paint and boom, you're done. You really, you're really working the layers up as you go. So I'm going to squeeze some paint on. I'm going to use the the Jelly Plate, uh, the Jelly Arts Plate uh, acrylic. This is a green. Looks a lot like green gold. It's called Kiwi. And you can put the paint on the whole plate, or you can leave part of it where there isn't any paint. It's up to you how you do that. So in this step, I think I'm going to go ahead and take a stencil. And I will just place the stencil down. Now, I also want to say, too, if you're in a climate that's really dry, uh, <laughs> you have to work a little faster. And I'm hoping that these paints are a little bit more, they stay wet longer, which it, they do say they do. And then you can work a little slower. But in a really dry climate, it, it, it's really amazing how fast the paint dries. And I'm in a humid climate, so I can work a little slower. So after I place the stencil down, I like to roll my brayer over the top. This is just kind of one of my little secret things I like to do, Not really secret, but, and then I like to have paper under my work surface so that I can roll the brayer out and I can then uh, be uh, cleaning the brayer off, wiping the brayer and having that ink uh, also disperse onto other paper. Um, I generally use uh, newsprint for that and it works really well. Okay, so now I'm gonna take one of my papers that I'm working with, and I think I'm gonna go ahead and go with a piece of the watercolor paper. And for this, I am gonna just put the whole thing right over the top of it and just smooth it out. And you can use the brayer on the back if you want. What's cool about this is if you decide at some point you want to maybe use this as a journal page or something, you'll have stuff on the back as well. And so that's our first pass on that. And it, it's not much, but that's just the beginning. Now I'm gonna pull up the stencil, and hopefully I have not worked too slow. And I'm gonna take one of my tags, and I'm going to just put a part, just part of the tag on a piece of the jelly plate, just part of it. So I just have a small bit, and you can do that for, well, as many tags as you want. So I'm gonna do this one going the other direction. So we're gonna go this way, the long way and you just rub that on and peel it off. And so now we've got a few things that we're working with there. So I also think I'm gonna go ahead and place my, uh, this is the, um, it's like a graph paper. I'm gonna put that on there and kind of soak up the rest of that. And so now we just have a few, um, you can see where the tag pulled off those other parts. And so I'm just gonna set that aside. And I don't clean it in between. I like to eventually have, this amazing uh, layer of all these different colors that will kind of come up. And I just, I love the way that looks when you get to that point and you can pull off a bunch of other colors. So now let's go to this. Uh, and that paint really did stay wet. It, it really did. It uh, was nice to work with. And let's go ahead and squeeze off some of this. this is called fresh water. This is also the, uh, the Jelly Arts paint. And that's a beautiful color. I'm not even gonna. I'm not even gonna fill the whole plate. 
And let's go in. I want to show you as we build the layers, obviously there's different ways to continually create them, but I'm going to show you on this one. I'm going to go ahead and place this down. I'm going to do the same thing where I pull some paint off of it. And the other thing is, is you can also not only do this on a work surface like I was showing you earlier, but you can also do it um, on your other papers or your tags. And so I'm just going to move this over. And so let's say I just wanted a little bit of color on that. My brayer now just pulls that color right onto it. So I try not to waste any paint if I can help it. <laughs> so I'm going to move this over and show you too that you can actually take the stencil now. And there probably isn't a lot of paint on this. But you can also try to get some of the paint off of the stencil that you've placed down. And so we did get a nice little background on that. So that's just kind of another way that you can keep working and building up your layers. So now we actually have the, the, the imprint here on the jelly plate of that. And I think with this one, I'm going to pull in a piece of my watercolor paper. Oh, I want to show you this because I think this is cool. So I want to talk you through a few of these things and then I'm going to speed up the video a little bit and continue building up the layers as we go. So what I want to do is show you this. This is one of my handmade stencils, um, just made with chipboard. It's very, uh, cardstock, it's very thick because it's been used a lot. And I'm going to place that right here. And I've got that print in there. And let's, let's maybe, hey, let's, let's do, let's maybe do this. And so now I'm going to place it down and I want it to go this direction. So let's place it down. I'm just going to rub into this area here and then lift. And so this is a little bit harder to see because you've got the pattern in there. And of course, I got a little bit of it from over here, but that's OK. We're just kind of building things up as we go. And now I think I'm just going to take this. This is cool because these colors really look pretty with that. And I'm going to just do part of this catalog page. So we've got that on there. And let's just do a partial on my watercolor paper. And let's do another tag. And I think on this one, we'll go this direction. So again, super easy way to get those segments going. And let's use this piece. And we'll just finish off a little bit of that. So we've got some there. Okay, still not going to clean this, just gonna leave it. Uh, like it is. And I'm going to use a love fluorescent pink. This is Amsterdam reflex rose. So let's use a little bit of that. I love mixing that color with the um, You can use a mask. So I'm going to run the mask like this and a third time and I'm going to take some of it off of this and do it on the tag. So like that. And so now you've got a little, and it pulled up a little bit of that blue or that teal. Okay, so there's that. And let's go, let's go with this one and maybe half of it, not the whole, the whole thing. And it pulled up a little bit of that teal in there too. Really pretty color.
So now I'm going to use Permanent Violet Dark. This is actually a great color uh, for contrasting, just like using black or white or even raw umber. This is a beautiful color. It's very rich. All right, so let's go in. I'm going to go in with some of these handmade stencils that are, again, cut with cardstock. And they thicken up over time because they are used over and over and I don't clean them. So it's nice that I can just keep using them. And then when I need a new one, I just make another one, right? Let's do that. And let's do this. Okay, so now we've got this little thing going. And this is a great contrasting color too for the, the greens and the pink. So I think for this one, I'm just going to... I want to get the shapes that are inside these little cutouts. So we're going to start with that. And that looks beautiful. Look at how pretty that contrast is. It really makes the pink pop. And you can get a, you got a little bit of that peachy color that came through as well. Love it. Okay. So now I'm going to lift this up and I want to get some of this onto my tag. So let's go with maybe right here. Do this, and now I've got a little bit of a segment right here at the bottom. Again, building up your tag. Okay, so we still have some more here. So let's grab, let's grab this one. I think this one will look good. And I think let's just do this. You don't know until you try what it's going to do. Um, so don't be afraid. It's just paper. It's just paint. And as you keep working, I love this second when you get the, when you take the little thing off of it. I love how that looks. So let's do, um, let's just grab this one and we'll put, we'll put this one on this one. How's that? And we'll pull up some more of this other purple on the other side. Again, it's just the base. We're just getting going. Just getting going. I think this one's my favorite so far. I love those colors. Right. Now I want to use a little bit of the Payne's Gray, which is a little bit, it's a lot like a, oops, I think that was, that needed to be shaken up. Payne's Gray is like a substitute really for like black. It's a rich, rich, dark, dark blue. It's maybe slate color. It's really pretty. So let's put just a little bit on there and let's do a little bit of light blue. Okay. So I'm just going to roll a little bit of this. I'm going to mix it up a little bit, put a little bit of that. And that blue is just really thick. That's okay. Cause you don't really know what that's going to do. And then I'm going to, I think I'm going to pull a print for this because I think that one will look really pretty. Let's just see what happens. I'm not even going to use a stencil for that part. Just going to rub lightly on there. And that looks awesome. Love how that did that. Okay. And then I'm just going to pull some more of this. You can see some of that blue because it's super thick. Um, actually uh, imprinted a little bit on there. Okay. So let's go back to our tags and let's do I think a spot right here. And let's roll maybe this one. Actually, I'm going to do it on this. I'm going to roll it on here. So just get a little bit of blue on there. Hmm, that's pretty. Sometimes the back ends up looking pretty good. And I think I want to do this too. Let's just do a little piece of that. Look how cool that looks. Doesn't even have to be super straight when you do in your tags. Okay, so now I want to show you something else that I love is you got some paint on here. Actually, I want to put a little bit of, this is Martha Stewart's Party Streamer. I'm going to put a little bit of that on there. Let's roll that in there. Mix that. And then I'm going to spritz some water on here. And I'm trying to decide, since we're kind of working with the same palette on that one, I don't think I want to use that. Let's Let's use this. This is the uh, True Ray paper, and I'm just going to put it on here. 
And then you get this really awesome kind of watercolory look when you do that. And this will look so different when it dries too. So I'll show you once that dries, it's gonna be really cool. this up and I think we're going to go back to this handmade stencil and let's use let's use that side I think let's do this yeah and see the colors that are underneath it pull through and then you've got still a little bit of paint left right there let's see what this does And that's really the discovery of it is like, what is it going to do now? Look at, you can see some of the purple through there. That's cool. I like it. Okay. So let's go back. Let's actually use this one. I think that's what I had said. And let's just place it down. And that toned down quite a bit that, and again, you're just, you're just going to continue building up the layers and then we still have this little bit right here I think I'm going to take maybe this tag and maybe let's overlay that and see what happens haha <laughs> look at that that's pretty cool well it's very very different now I like that a lot okay this is still a little bit wet but I'm going to go ahead and put this on here Tone that down a little bit. That's starting to look really good. It's going to look, like I said, really good when it's dry. And let's use the rest of this, I think, for this one. Let's see. Let's go with the green again. I kind of always stick, I mean, I generally use most of the colors I like, but okay. So this is a lighter coating of the green it's not so thick let's go with this one and we're not going to use a stencil on it let's just go ahead and see what this looks like if we don't because you can do the same thing that you do on your tags on your paper and so now we've got this kind of changing up the way it looks that's pretty cool and then we can still even bounce back here go back a little further and what if we did this? What if we said, all right, let's put some of that on the tag. Let's make a, a nice little layer here. And so that looks pretty cool, don't you think? We're just kind of building that up too. And we can still, let's go this direction. Okay, so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to continue working because I want to continue adding more layers to especially these tags that I'm working with and some of these other backgrounds so that you can really see how that process goes as I'm building up those layers.
let's take a look at the papers that I made and the tags. I'm pretty happy with all of these. I might go back in with uh, a few more layers, but what I want to point out is that it, it's not like this one piece here is, is a piece of artwork. You know, it's, this could end up being uh, folded and trimmed and parts of it used for projects. So don't always think of it as being like, this is the final thing, because I often end up folding and tearing and cutting these into pieces and using them in other ways. This is the um, catalog paper. I love this little spot right here. And this part right in here too looks really good. And this one's kind of wild. Um, this one I'll probably just use pieces of it because of all the stripes that are on there. But I kind of like that. And this one, I love this, this little part right in here. And again, you know, if you start looking at it in terms of parts of it, um, you can do a whole lot with these. All right, let me turn this over here at the bottom. Um, this one, I wasn't crazy about this little spot in here. I might go back in and do a little bit with that. Love how this part turned out with all those different colors and the variations in that one. I especially like this. And this is the one on the True Ray uh, construction paper. Um, we remember we spritzed the water and I just, this one's just, I love this too with all these different variations in it as well. And I just love this paper really when it dries, it's just so beautiful. And this is the ledger paper and this is still a little bit damp, but I actually like how this one turned out too. Uh, might go in and maybe do a little bit more, but I'm thinking this is probably just going to end up being trimmed and you know, you can always layer your tags. You can, you know, put this a tag, uh, this on a tag and end up with, you know, a background really fast and easy. So don't limit yourself. All right, so let's take a look at the tags that we did. And these are just the starter tags, but they've got a nice base. They've got the backgrounds and they're, you know, this one I did sort of uh, all in the horizontal. Um, this one I added in some variation as well. And this one had a little bit more of the pattern added. But these are great, so now they're ready to actually be used and um, uh, as starter art tags. So thank you so much for watching. I hope that you picked up some tips and some ideas on how to layer and build up and also segment your um, jelly prints. So have fun and let me know if you have any questions at all. Thanks a lot, until next time, bye-bye.